Audi, Legendary Void here, and today I have a deck tech that is actually a part of a special challenge uh, done by Wreck and Rule um, on the Facebook page. They had a challenge to build a private sideswipe deck um, as a back of the binder challenge. Um, now, I went ahead and just thought, hey, why not? Let's go ahead and try and do it. Today, I am here to present that deck to you. Um, I've done a little bit of tweaking with it. I've played against it at my local league a little bit, or I've played with it. And it's done pretty well. It's able to beat a decent number of decks. Um, it just takes a long, long time because it is a nice, uh, nice grindy blue deck. Um, but yeah, we're going to try and go with that. So first of all, let's talk about Sideswipe himself. He is a car melee in his alt mode. He's 211-1 as an 8 cost, which already off the bat, that's not very impressive whatsoever. Um, and then his effect is when he flips to this mode, this gets plus 2 tech uh, until the end of the turn for each character in your KO area. Um, that's really a decent effect if you can get a ton of characters in your KO area, but part of the challenge was not to use Wave 2 Grimlock, which allows you to pull characters into your uh, KO area. Um, so we're gonna have to try and do something different, I guess. Um, and then in his bot mode, uh, he is a 411 one, which is a little better. Um, and then one of, when one of your other characters is KO'd during your opponent's turn, you can untap this. Um, this happens occasionally, but usually your opponent will try and KO Sideswipe anyway to begin with, so you're never able to pull this off. Um, at least in my experience, they've been doing this. Um, but if you can pull it off, it's kind of nice, because then your opponent's like, Whoa, he does that? Because usually they haven't played against a Sideswipe before. Um, but yeah, uh, Sideswipe's interesting in that regard. Um, but usually you're going to try and use him for this effect if you can. Otherwise, he's more of just a, just a target for your opponent to get rid of right off the bat so you can build up your other characters. Because um, obviously if you're playing Sideswipe, there's a reason you're playing Sideswipe. Um, so, we're also playing Cliff Jumper because um, we're going to go the cars route with this deck. He's a car melee and when one of your other cars flips to bot mode, you draw a card. Um, he's also an 8 cost car with significantly better stats and basically every regard. Um, but he's again there for more draw support because when you flip to bot mode, you get to draw a card. Uh, effectively making your first starting hand, if you go first, a five card hand, which is very, very good. That's why Cliff Jumper is such a fantastic card to begin with. Um, and then he actually has another effect that's sort of similar to Sideswipes, saying that he has plus one attack for each car in the KO area. Meaning that if they want to play against this deck efficiently, they need to kill both of these before getting to the other character. Um, which is a little interesting to think about, um, that they need to get rid of both of these uh, so they don't get the effects uh, that they're working towards. So Sideswipe doesn't get his plus two and Cliff Jumper won't get his plus one for the cars in the KO area. Um, and then the last character we're playing is another back of the binder card that I don't see get played a lot, but I wanted to try it out with this sort of deck. And it does work to some degree, um, and it's Private Hot Rod. Um, now, he's an interesting card in, that in his alt mode. He's a 412-2, which is pretty average for an 8 cost, but he is a 9 cost car with Safeguard 3. And although Safeguard 3 is something that can be easily overridden, um, we're mainly here for his other effect, which says when you reshuffle your deck and this doesn't have a battle card underneath him, sort of like Nemesis Prime, uh, you put the bottom card of the deck face down under him. Um, of course, there's no effect for that in this mode to begin with, but when you flip to his bot mode, uh, while this has a battle card under him, you may play an extra action on each of your turns. Now, this is one of the main things of this deck. You get to abuse so many actions, as well as being able to draw a lot of cards with Cliff Jumper and other cards in the deck. Um, so, the main goal of this deck is, again, to draw as many cards as you can, pierce super hard, and as well as also being able to um, deal damage for each character they've already killed, whether it be Sideswipe or Cliff Jumper. So, um, now that we've gone over the characters, we can, in fact, get into the battle cards. So, starting off with the actions, and there is a lot of them, uh, we have two Heavy Handed, and two the bigger they are. Um, this is just another way for us to guarantee Pierce. Um, I would run three of each, but again, I couldn't find uh, space in the deck to do that. Um, so we just settled on two of each. Um, it gives plus two and then pierce four based on how many stars the opponents have. Um, so it's nice having both either way, so you can hit for the small guys and the big guys. Um, either way, um, that you have a nine and two eight costs, you can kind of do that with a lot of different characters either way. Um, so that's kind of nice. And we also have three leap into battles. So because we're going to be able to play so many actions with Hot Rod, um, you can play any amount of these 
at any time in the game. You can play two leaps, you can play two bigger they are, two heavy handed, any combination of those is a very interesting uh, setup of cards um, because there's so much pierce that you can do with them and then there's so much just raw damage you can add to your character's base tech. Um, so those are, that's the purpose of those. We also have three copies of War of Attrition for uh, pretty fairly obvious reasons, I think, because most blue decks that are able to draw a lot, like this one, um, they probably are going to be playing War of Attrition just because they can get those green pip cards into their hand as well as actually play them all. Because um, it does, uh, your opponent chooses one of their characters and does one damage for each one you play, and you can play all three in one turn. And if you do play all three, then you get to repair three, um, which is again a really nice thing for a blue deck to have because it's just making your opponent have to work harder to kill your characters. And then when they actually do kill the characters, someone like Sideswipe will be able to pop off and do more damage for them actually doing that. And because we're going to be playing so many cards at one time. We're going to be playing work over time as well since our hand sizes are going to drop pretty quickly because of how many we're playing. Uh, you want to be able to draw back up and continue to play. Um, so drawing four cards to your hand is very nice as well as having a white pit for more defensive flips. Um, and of course this is a traditional cards deck and you can't have a tra uh, traditional cards deck without start your engines. Uh, three of them of course which lets you flip all of your characters to car mode and then untap one of them which is exactly what cars do. And we are going to try and abuse this as much as we can um, by trying to get all your characters to be untapped whenever your opponent's fully tapped out so you can get a ton of attacks in along with a bunch of peers. And again, it is a blue deck as well, so we're going to be playing three copies of Security Checkpoint. Each player reveals, all, uh, reveals their hand and this card's all upgrades from them. Um, it's, it's a nice card to play if you have a ton of actions in hand, which there is a ton of actions in this deck to begin with. Um, and then your opponent can just scrap all upgrades, but uh, there are a decent amount of upgrades in this deck as well, but mostly there are actions. Um, so of course you want to be sure uh, you can play that whenever you're going to be minimizing the damage to yourself and maximizing it to your opponent. And that is all the regular actions. We do have a few secret actions that we can play. Um, of course being three copies of hidden fortifications this is not only good just for the defensive flips but it also helps you cycle through your deck a bit faster for hot rod um, as you're flipping three more cards on uh, defense potentially five more um, with the white pip um, but you're able to just flip your deck a lot faster and then get that extra action going on hot rod as soon as possible um, as well as the other secret action we are playing is two copies of Sabotage Armaments. Uh, when one of your characters defends, grab all the attacker's weapons. Um, this gets rid of Weaponizers, Battlemasters, Energon Axes, anything that can do pierce to you, as well as um, anything that's just going to be attacking you for raw, raw damage, such as grenade launchers or power punches. And that would be all of our actions. So, for the upgrades, we have a ton of weapons to try and abuse pierce and direct damage as we can. So we have two copies of Nobles Blaster. We are playing a full all Autobot team, so of course you can play that on all of them. Um, and it's kind of nice just having solid damage on one of your characters as they do have um, a green pip, so you can just pull them to your hand, guaranteed two um, on one of your characters uh, to a Decepticon with the pierce two as well. Um, and then we also have three copies of Energon Slingshot because almost every single form on all the characters is melee, so melee, melee, Hot Rod is melee and melee, Cliff Jumper is melee, and then he's ranged in his bot mode, but um, you're rarely going to be flipping Cliff Jumper to bot mode unless he's the last character in play, and even in that case, you probably wouldn't want to play Slingshot on him anyway, because you're going to be wanting to deal more damage. With another card that we have in this deck, Energon X. Um, put on damage characters only, it gives Pierce 2 and plus 3 attack. It's a very strong card in and of itself, the plus 3 is already strong, but the Pierce 2 even more so, it just increases the amount of Pierce you'll be able to do to your opponent. Um, and if you're able to stack that on um, with cards like Bigger They Are, Heavy Handed, that kind of stuff, you're just going to be doing hitting them for a lot of damage every turn. And then we also have three copies of Handheld Bluster because of course this is a blue deck and we want to be defending as much as possible to last as long as we can. So, bold one. Doesn't help too much, there are a decent amount of oranges in this deck, um, but otherwise it's mainly there just for the double blues. 
Now we only have one kind of armor, which is two copies of sparring gear. Um, the reason I didn't play three of these, uh, one for each of the characters, is because you would rather be playing most of the time other upgrades such as turbo boosters, of course Energon X and Energon Slingshot. Um, so two of these is only necessary for the times you're going to be playing against those uh, aggressive orange decks and you need to defend against them. The tough two is definitely going to keep you alive for a bit longer, although they are an orange pip, again it's another reason not to play a third one, but if you really want to go the defensive route, you're more than welcome to put in a third one yourself. And last but not least, let's get into the utilities. We do have three copies of Turbo Boosters because once more, it is a cars deck at the very heart of it. Um, so you're going to be wanting to untap as much as possible. So three Turbo Boosters is kind of a necessity for that. Um, but you do have to be in car mode to untap and the plus one attack isn't even all that bad um, if you're trying to swing for high numbers. Um, it's just a nice base point for building up to that. Um, and then we are playing one other utility, which is a pocket processor. Um, this is a nice card to get on the hot rod. Um, as you can keep drawing through your deck again, allowing him to get that card underneath him a little bit sooner, um, as well as increasing your hand size so you don't have to uh, use your work over times um, because your hand size is already growing to be so large. Um, but yeah, that's the entire deck. Um, I don't have a set aside sideboard yet, um, but I do have some ideas for what you could do for this sort of deck. You could, instead of playing um, Sideswipe, you could actually put in Barricade, which is something I've seen Powered by Primus doing a lot, as well as a lot of the guys around here. They've been doing some crazy untapped shenanigans um, because Sideswipe, or sorry, Barricade, it lets you put a blank pip card underneath him if you have, uh, if you flip it during a uh, battle. Um, so you put it underneath him and then you flip to his other mode and you actually get to play it. Um, most people have been doing this with Ready for Action, which untaps a character with 10 stars or less, and Barricade is a 7 cost car, so that's already nice in and of itself, um, and already that makes it to where if you're playing all 3 Ready for Action, there's 9 untapped cards in the deck. Another example of another sideboard character you could put in is probably something like Wheeljack. Um, if you want to go the fear, uh, pure, uh, Pierce route, you can have your sideboard entirely dedicated to Black Pip cards, and seeing as there are a lot of weapons in this deck, um, Wheeljack is going to have the bold three triggered almost immediately most of the time. Um, so he is going to be able to get a ton of pierce in um, with all the pierce cards that you're going to have. You can put in wedge formation because he is a specialist in his alt mode. Um, you can do melee and then arranged. Swap out private hot rod if you want to. Um, put in wheeljack and then boom you've got a ton more pierce you can add on into your deck. Um, you can go the pierce route or you can just go uh, straight blue, defend as much as possible, disrupt your opponent's hand with things like espionage, you can try and go that route as well. Um, but I think pierce is the way to go with this sort of deck. Sideswipe, um, he has, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it plainly, he doesn't have the best stats in the world, that's why he is a back of the binder card. Um, so of course, uh, you're going to be wanting to try and output as much damage as possible while defending as much as possible. Um, so Pierce is definitely going to be the right way to go here because his base attack in both forms is a little low for the rest of his stat line. So, But yeah, I think that's pretty much it. You are more than welcome to take this deck and do whatever you want with it. Wreck and roll if you're watching. Um, I had a lot of fun with this list, honestly. A lot more fun than I thought I'd have. Sideswipe is an interesting character and I want to see more uh, go towards him. Maybe a stratagem potentially. Um, but... This is a fun deck. I've had a lot of fun just being able to spam a whole bunch of actions with Hot Rod, as well as, you know, making your opponent worry about what Sideswipe can potentially do at the deck. Um, it is kind of funny seeing how fast they scramble to try and kill Sideswipe right off the bat. Um, it's almost hilarious, really, because most of the time, of course, they're going to go after uh, Cliff Jumper or Hot Rod. Um, but since Sideswipe's in the deck, they usually get a w bit worried since, you know, you're playing Sideswipe for a reason. Um, but it's it's a fun card, and I, I really want to see more with him in the future. So if you like this video, don't forget to smash like and subscribe. And uh, of course, as always, have a phenomenal day. Peace.